I just curse for an hour, twice a week. <laughs> Go home? Yeah, exactly. I don't unbutton my shirt. Boom, I'm Chris Sims. There are only two people who have ever done up top buttons. Chris Sims and then the film director, David Lynch. And his show is called Unbuttoned. It's ridiculous. It's, it's, he must it's... be confronted. <laughs> What's up? They're, they're getting on me about they, my... They are. They are. They are a little bitter that I come on this show are they? the draft season. You yeah. Could be, you could, I, I feel can feel it. it. I right. can feel it. The I kind of just sit there between them. I know. I kind of want to see the video now so I can look at the face the a little bit and yeah. just feel it a little yes. bit more. I can't always understand what the hell Jay is saying with Part his Australian. The right. I was like, wait, what the did Jay just say, <laughs> huh? Come back at me, mate? I don't know. So I want to hear it again, honestly. That's what I want to hear. And then I know Barry is talking shit. I know he was. So yeah, yeah. Barry, Barry's basically synopsis of this podcast is button my shirt, curse a couple of times, and go home. Oh, that's great. Like Thanks, he doesn't dude. like right. he doesn't roll in. Yeah. you know, with a diet coke. Yeah, and, that's right. Yeah, like four minutes before, it's like I don't like this fantasy. Four player. minutes. Four. Four minutes. <laughs> or when the show started. We're alive on Peacock right, throughout right. the season. Yeah, five right. to six days a week. Yeah. There's times where we're at the 20 second marker, and he's not. And there. I'm like, man, we better uh, put a jetpack on him right I, now. I know you've had shows where I've been outside in the car, and the cars, the show's about to start, and he's driving in. I've oh. seen it. He, he, did, I still haven't talked to him about this. I still haven't said this. I was at a stop sign right out here. There's the four way stop sign. Yeah. It was me, one of the big bosses at NBC, right? Yep. I could make a guess. Go on. And he. <laughs> right, and I didn't know it was he at first, as in Barry. We all kind of pulled up, me and top executive for NBC here, right? Pull up first. Barry is clearly third, clearly. By the time I look at my guy to wave executive to go, Barry's already gone, <laughs> and he's on his phone and not even looking. That's he's literally ter- like that's terrifying. He's literally like this and turning. And I've been meaning to talk to him about it for a while because that's, you know, I, I need to actually punch him in the arm. Probably. This is the proper way yeah, now. Right. Like sometimes you got to right. bully people out of yeah. bad habits. Yeah. Right. This is bullying out of a bully real, that's a, a bad, bit. that's a yeah, bad habit. Yeah. Plus he's talking about my unbuttoned shirt. So yeah. now I got to talk shit to him. If right. you, Barry, and a top executive got into a three-way crash in front of the studio, <laughs> everybody's safe. Uh, yeah. But that story would live on. I know. I know. For the end of time. I've been meaning to because I've told other people at work about yeah. it and I haven't brought it up with him. So at some point I will. All right, but stick it's up with me, all right? Man. I, I mean, will. One thing I know I is that you and me show. can take those two all I'm, day long. I think we're in good all shape. All day long. I think we're. you and all I right? are the unified tag team we'll, champions of we'll, NBC. Yeah, exactly. We'll yes. get together. We'll take Jay. He might be a little work. 100%. And we'll fend off Barry with an arm for a minute. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll Behind tag our team back. in and just really kick the crap out it's of him. It's a great strategy. Enjoy. Okay, I Kicking like the uh, studio right, door. Good. We got to figure it out. I like it. All right. You know what You know what week it is. It's draft week. Yes, it is. That's right. Connor Rogers is here. He's hosting the show today. He's the man. Thanks for coming in as always. Cool little jacket you got on there too. Ahmed did hear us making fun of him uh, in his wardrobe last time. And we're going to do it again because Ahmed's just <laughs> not as cool as you. He does not have your wardrobe. But it's uh, it's it's an awesome week. Excited for that. Mock draft day today. Okay, we're going to do a little bit of that. What I think is going to happen. Of yes. course, I don't know. I'm not going on what I would do. I'm going on what I think, what I've heard. I've got some inklings from some people. It's a very hard thing to do. We'll see. And then Wednesday, we're going to do a little AMA just to throw that out there for people. Uh, I'm going to unleash some things I've heard around the league about the draft and kind of go more in depth with that. Thursday for the draft, we'll be in the barn. Drinky, drinky, smoky, smoky. You're welcome to come hang if you want, just so you know. Can you get me out of my obligations? Well, I didn't know what your obligations I'll, were there. So I'll be here. You'll be here? Yeah. Okay. Well, so you, you would As want, of now. Well, yep. My place is going to be more fun. I'm just going to tell you that. <laughs> I All believe right? it. Right. <laughs> I listened to it last year <laughs> after. After, oh. And I was like, "Wow, yeah, yeah, we we, uh, we yeah. were in the wrong we place. Got, we got sauced up. We got oh, pretty good awesome. there. Yep, it looked awesome. Yep, it looked awesome. All right, we'll make that happen yeah, one right. year. Yep. You also have trades right. this mock draft, which I, I absolutely love because Thanks. predicting trades is where the real bread is made. The real winners are right. made, and right. These are really like on the nose. So we're going to have a lot of fun with this one. All right. We'll see. I tried to do, you know, I tried not to over trade. In years past, I've kind of been like, I'm just not going to do any trades because like it's such a just like a, but, but like I've heard this year thoughts, things you hear. I've heard, ooh, this team likes this player. And I kind of just went, you know, I'm going to go with like my just my guts and instincts on this a little bit here and there and and see what I can pull out. So, uh, yeah, I got, I think, what, three different trades. I thought about a fourth at the end of the first round. I think there's a number of teams at the end of the first round 
Detroit, the 49ers. I look at those two teams specifically and go, I don't know if a player of need fits that spot right there. They might trade down and acquire picks. Uh, I didn't do that, but we'll get into that as we get down the, the board here. And it feels like the Ravens are back there. They're yeah, always like so. collect right. picks. Exactly and, right. right. Right, without a doubt. Yeah. So a reminder, last year in round one, there were six trades. Yeah. The year before that, there were eight. Oof. There's projected five to six quarterbacks to go in the first round this year. That kind of always cranks up yep. the amount of trades. Right. Uh, the receiving talent and offensive line talent could do that as well. And it's kind of a good reminder, you know, even the best people at this, you know, are far off from having a high right. hit rate. Right. Now, somebody who did knock it out of the park in terms of trades last year, Daniel Jeremiah predicted the Texans to trade up to pick number two and three last year was Pre- probably predicted. Yeah, the first time in history a mock draft has really nailed it. Right? Well, yeah, because somebody yeah. told right, me. Right, right, right. That's why I let was me, laughing. Let I let predicted. Me, right. Uh, somebody g- told me gathered, the night before the gathered draft. Gathered intel. Yes, yeah, so yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. But if that was amazing. Just guessing trades. Yeah, yeah. Right. That is a good point about this exercise is that people doing mock drafts that have information are. You know, yeah, telling you what they no, that heard. was awesome. That was, uh, you know, he'll, everybody will be looking for that from him this year, right? So, oh, the eyes are on you know, Jeremiah's definitely mock, the last mock draft, definitely, right? right. Because it's going to be there, and I, I think that'll probably lead to him not being quite as accurate this I agree. year because you can't someone's going to love, right? Exactly, then right. people just don't ever speak to you definitely. again, as you and I both know. It, well, yeah, definitely, <laughs> you exactly, p- right? And be the, very careful. And lad, what he did last year, yeah, it was so crazy. You were like, that's not going to happen, right. right? Like, but that's cool, that's cool. He did that. I like the thought, oh, we got his. You know, Will Anderson up there and all that, but damn, that, yeah, he nailed that one. Certainly had the inside info. But, yeah, it's tough. I mean, I don't even know what I would have gotten right last year. I wonder. I, I mean, I'm sure I got one or two right, but I don't think many more than that. Mel Kuyper got one, right? It's crazy. And he's the master of the draft. And That's I'm not crazy. trying to say that to take a shot on Mel, just to say, like, no, what Pete wrote you. here, this shit is hard. Right. right. This shit is hard. It, it's not easy to figure this this stuff out. And to you know, kind of put it in perspective, DJ last year had Bryce Young, Stroud, Will Anderson all correct. Then he had Will Levis to the Colts. Well, that, that, that kind of gives like, you it all. Right. It goes to show you, right. like, even the best guys. Right. Can be you know twenty five spots off. On yeah, the player or right. Whatever, Not even going in the first round. Right. right? I mean, yeah. So the, the, it it is, and and you know some of these like again, you're blind. You're a bi- blind squirrel looking for a nut. Is that what they say, right? Or a blind squirrel looking for an acorn? I guess is more of the. They do say thing. nut. They do, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Um. But but like, yeah. Some of these. You have no idea what that team's feel or thought is, so you just try to make your best guesstimation on some things you've heard, evaluations, whatever. But, yeah, you're going to be in the dark here. And, like, some of the ones that are drafting quarterbacks, right, Uh, some of those teams are – as I've told people here, like some of the teams I'm least connected to, so I don't have anybody there that I have comfortable conversations along that way, right? And, you know, with the quarterback position and when it becomes that – type of team and they need the draft pick that's the least conversations I've ever had with anybody in every year the team that needs quarterback is the team I can promise you I talk to less or the least about quarterbacks in every draft process because they don't want anybody to figure it out or glean any info or or, you know uh, let their stuff get out the thing I find Chris hardest too with the quarterback conversation is even if you know people there or connected to there the amount of like convoluted opinions in one yeah, building. One building exactly. Like you can have an offensive coordinator mm-hmm. that likes the consensus fifth quarterback in the draft number one, and then you could have a GM that's like, oh, I would never take that guy there, and you don't know who's going to win. No, that's you why you have no idea who's exactly going to win. Exactly right. That's why I think you can have guys like me and and you know maybe Dell and yell Jeremiah wrong on pick four because he might have had somebody credible in Indianapolis yeah. who was kind of in the Will Levis camp. It was like. You know, we like well, we like Levis, but that person maybe just didn't know that Chris Ballard liked Richardson more right. or whatever. And that that's where, you know, you can be wrong. You could talk to a few people in an organization and think, ooh, they are leaning this way. And then you come out, the pick's made, you text those people and go, wait, I thought you were leaning this way. And he went, GM and the head coach like the other guy better. Like we, we kind of had a civil war in the building, whatever. They wanted that guy. They won whatever, and that's kind of how it goes down. And then you have teams that might not even feel any way about a quarterback, but the owner needs a franchise quarterback because they sure. need something to be excited yeah, about. So right. There's just so many 
weird gray areas of quarterbacks in the draft that makes it that hard. Quarterback always makes it weird, right? I think in the media we all over over yes. you know do it. The talk, oh, it's higher up the draft board yep. than they probably should be, right? Um, I think that's part of that. And then this year, hey, as we get into this mock draft, like we're about to here in a second, pick two has become a crazy thing all of a sudden because again, as I know, right, and I've been led to believe this from from people in the league. Daniel, I mean, and and people knew this to a degree. Jaden Daniels wants to go to the Raiders. That's period. He's been kind of giving Washington the cold shoulder ever since this whole process started. Not that he's not willing to go there, but just more of like, I, I'd rather go to the Raiders, right? So that's been out there. And then I think it came to a head last week with them bringing all the quarterbacks in when he thought he was going to be the only one in there by himself. So that pissed him off. That pissed their camp off, right? Now, I don't think it's pissed them off to the point where they're like, Washington, don't draft us, right? Yeah. You know, but it certainly made things uncomfortable. And of course, if, if that does come to that point where it's like Jaden Daniels says something, well, that's going to throw this whole draft into a frenzy here and what could happen. And all of a sudden, there's a lot of different tunnels and ten ten tentacles, right, to where this can go if Washington doesn't take Jaden Daniels at number two. The last I did hear, the, yeah. that visit that, you know, was yeah. the talk. Of I heard it was fine, though. It ended up being fine. Yeah, sure. I'm sure they were openly not happy yeah. that everyone was there. Yeah. But I heard at the end of the day. It was, yeah, it's it not wasn't a deal like breaker. I'm not cut. It's, exactly. Exactly. Right. So let's jump right into the mock draft. Yeah, then, let's Because do it. that's kind of where it has to start. Obviously, number one, you're going to have the Bears take Caleb Williams because the Bears are taking Caleb Williams. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you want us to say? Damn. One for one. <laughs> yep. Bam. Everybody uh, gets one this year. Yeah, everybody gets one this yeah. year. You're right. Yeah. I mean, come on. We know this is this is this is done. It's in the books. Uh, he's extremely talented. You know, I love him. I don't see a too many flaws with them. And I think when you just look at Chicago and of course I, I just, you know, go back to the GM and the fact that he came from Kansas city before he came the GM, he's seeing this guy who's got some of those Mahomes ish type of traits, right? Uh, I, I just, it's a no brainer. So Caleb Williams, Chicago bears. I'm really excited to see that. And of course I think the bears, even without Caleb Williams, we're a team that I would have said, watch out for this year. The D is real, right? We've talked about this on some past podcasts, yeah. the way they played at the end of the year. Offense lines, I mean, offense has got some potential too. With Keenan Allen, the O-line I think is better than people realize. The tight end, Cole Komet's pretty freaking big time. You know, So they got something working there in Chicago. Uh, I'm excited for what it could look like with Caleb Williams. And they will get to their ninth overall pick that's only going to make yeah. the team yeah. that much better. Yeah. So number two, the commanders. I'm interested to hear your thought on what I do at nine there. Yeah. yeah. Number two, the commanders you have them going Jaden Daniels I do I do I have um you know enough info for where like you just discussed it's not like don't pick me right there's obviously a little friction there and yeah sure he wants to go with an old friend and Antonio Pierce but he's still it's willing comfort. to go yeah and hey you go to a place like Washington again I look at that as a place where I, I know we all question what's going on in the organization right now, right? But, like, as a quarterback, that to me is the place where, like, a Mahomes to Kansas City or even a Burrow to the Bengals or even, like, C.J. Stroud to Houston. It's like they haven't had one in a while or they've never had one that's been, like, the guy for a long time. You you can be that guy there, and then they have some talent at receiver, right? That, that to me, should be encouraging to Jaden Daniels from that standpoint. That'd be a situation, wow, storied franchise. They've never really had that big-time guy, right? They went to the Super Bowl and won, you know, three Super Bowls with three different damn quarterbacks in the 80s, yeah. right? So they're a little different that way. Here's the thing to me, when I've been saying this, because it feels like if they didn't do Jaden Daniels, they would do Drake May, right? That's what it feels like. And again, I, have, I agree. I That's, have no inside yeah. info. But as I was talking about this on the show today at PFT, we were talking about the Jaden Daniels, Drake May, Washington conundrum, right? I had somebody that I really trust connected to the situation who texted me and said, it will not be Drake May at two. Okay, so that was like the first time I had heard anything stone cold from somebody I trust about Washington in the quarterback situation. All right. And that was the text I get. Right. It will not be Drake May at number two. So that means, OK, if it's not Jaden Daniels or somebody else they like or some other plan or whatever else they're going to do. But either way, I think at the end of the day, you know, even with this little discontent or whatever else is out there, Jaden Daniels is too talented. Right. And. It, it wouldn't be the first time ever a guy was like wasn't like hey I you know I I I I I'm not sure if I want to go there. There's another place, but it all works out in the end anyways. And you can't let the player kind of hold the team hostage. I expect them to take him. What do you think of the fit with Jaden and Cliff Kingsbury? I mean, 
I don't see anything that's glaring to me. Right. You know, the, the thing I like about Jaden is he's got a quick, compact motion. If he's in the shotgun and got to get some of those quicker spread-type throws out, I think he's very capable of that, right? Cliff's usually pretty good at, you know, the one of the beauties about him with Arizona and Kyler Murray is, hey, they spread you out. Hey, okay, he picks you apart. He makes a few throws, whatever, but they spread you out too, and then you got a quarterback that runs, and you're like, shit, we got to worry about these pass concepts, and they're spreading us all over the field. Now they got lanes for a guy that's a super freak when it comes to running the football to open it up, and I, I kind of like that aspect. All right, so number three, this yeah. is where the it fun gets crazy. Gets, this is where right. it gets crazy. What yeah. did you do at number three? Number three, I had the, now the Vikings making the trade with the New England Patriots, right? I, 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 I you know, not that I know this either, but uh, from people, again, around the league and whatever else, I, I, I think New England wants to trade out of there. Mm. New England wants to take, I think has to take a quarterback, though. Right, that, that's the biggest thing. That right now, again, they got Bailey Zappi and Jacoby Brissett. I mean, that, they they're going to take something here, but I don't think they are comfortable with taking any of these guys at number three. I think Minnesota's desperate. They're going to get somebody in there that they feel like can run their offense and be the future for Kevin O'Connell. Again, I have no inside info on JJ McCarthy here. Of course, Dre May, Drake, Drake May is an interesting one here too because of the Josh McCown connection, right. right? And him coaching Drake May back in high school and that relationship. So I don't know if I'm right here, but I certainly think Drake, JJ McCarthy fits Kevin O'Connell's offense, right? Underneath center, JJ's going to be very comfortable with that. Play action game, crossers over the middle, all that stuff. That's what JJ did in Michigan. So I'm kind of going of, you know, off of that system fit guy I like. And, you know, there's that. But the Drake May thing certainly went into my thinking here as well of going, wait, maybe would they go Drake May here? You know, do they feel like, hey, we got Sam Darnold and this is great for Drake May. He can sit for a year and we can right. work with them and maybe we have something after that. Right. Um, but at the end of the day, I think I'm going with what what here's what did it for me. I didn't know, as I'm explaining here. Kevin O'Connell's faith press conference he had at the church over the weekend when he talked about. I think I could fix a lower part of a quarterback. I don't know if I can fix the upper part of the quarterback. And to me, Drake May's got both of those problems, right? There's lower body problems and upper body problems, right? So I know some took it that like, I guess, oh, Kevin O'Connell thinks he can fix Drake May. I took it as I heard the part where he says, there might be things that could happen for 15 years and I can't fix them. And that to me was what made my ears go. And I went, that sounds like that's Drake May. So that's kind of what led me to Jake JJ McCarthy again, though. There's no inside info here for this one. Let me throw a wild card yeah. at you because it's, it's so interesting hearing you talk about the fits with O'Connell because I think this is everybody's favorite landing spot for a rookie quarterback, yeah. like universal sure. like, across the board. Sure. What do you think about the fit with Penix to Minnesota? And yeah. they wouldn't have to trade to three. I'll make that very clear again. I'm like, what do you think? Of that kind of fit over I, there. I, I, I think they like him, too. I don't know how much, like, going up to three, I don't believe. But I think they like him a lot. I think in our traditional sense, listen, I don't think J.J. McCarthy, Penix, or Bo Nix are worth the third pick of the draft, right. right? But if you like a guy and you want him and you believe in him, go. Sure. I think Penix would fit that. Yeah, me too. I, I mean, you know, again... Penix maybe not quite as good at hopping around the pocket and doing stuff like that. Yeah, there's going to be a little bit of, hey, let's get him used to underneath the center and getting away from the line of scrimmage with all that because he's been in the shotgun and all that. But but for, for O'Connell, whose offense is – one fifteen and twenty and twenty five yard throw after another. How could you not like right, Michael Penix's right. fit in that? Right. So uh, that that would make sense to me. All right. So we'll get to more of the New England side yeah. when we go to pick eleven. Yep, we'll do that. We'll keep this moving. The Cardinals at four go very chalk. Marvin Harrison Jr. This seems like the favorite to happen. Yeah. And it's kind of hard to argue against. It this. does. Now, as I've said here on the podcast, I I don't I actually and I've checked with other people that. I know that are in our business and even, and I've said, do you know anybody that has Marvin Harrison Jr. as their number one receiver? I don't. Now, I don't know yeah. all 32 teams, but I don't know anybody in my friend world that has him as number one. Now, this is one, though. I could see one safe pick, name. We got to have it work, right? It's it's a big pick for us and, and our organization. They can sell him as the Larry Fitzgerald of the future, right? 
there's all of that. I think the the floor is very high with Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, there's been some talk about a little bit of a off the field thing with Malik Neighbors to a degree, Lightly, yeah. right? So I think to that, that's why I go Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, that just kind of what I feel through the grapevine and, and trusting some people that have a little feel for Arizona as well. It is funny, though, when you look at Michael Wilson on that team, it feels like Neighbors actually complements what the offense needs even more. And I love Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah. But like to your point, Neighbors is – Absolutely what that offense doesn't have in any capacity. I know. I know. Like explosive right. with and without the football. Yeah, I I, I know. So I, I guess it, it shouldn't be shocking to see if Arizona went. No, and I think that's another grain. part where I look at it and go, ooh, things could get interesting if yeah. they go neighbors there. And then I go, that could shake some things up for sure. Right, that that could shake up again. I I think it could shake up number five all of a sudden. They go, right. wait, now neighbors is on the board or not on the board or whatever. Or this guy, I mean, there's just a lot of things there that go into the play here. But safe pet, safe pick, good pedigree. He's got all the skills. He's a damn good player. Again, I know he's not my number one receiver. I got that, but he's damn good. And uh, yeah, I I'm kind of feeling that right there with number four. So five, the Chargers, you do have them taking yeah. Joe Alt, yeah. a tackle yeah. who would probably flip over to the right side in this yeah, situation. Right. I guess it'd so. be interesting how they handle that. Yep. But you're buying in the Harbaugh way of let's build it all in the trenches. I right think now. so. Yeah. Again, again, now I could see them maybe being in a trade down. I've had a few people tell me like, "Hey, you sure they won't take J.C. Latham? This is Harbaugh and Roman. They might believe in the big mauler, right? Latham did play right He's tackle, a right tackle, right? So." So I, I've had that thought out there. But again, I'm also a little bit like, hey, it's their first pick. It's their first draft. You know, man, Notre Dame tackle. Like, you can't be wrong with it a little bit. You know, it's a safe pick. All is definitely one of the safest picks of the draft. That's where I kind of went that way, right? And again, I don't think any of these guys all – Latham, really any of the top tackles. If they had to play left or right, I don't think fine. it's going to be a big adjustment for any of them. It's funny, too, because Latham is what like every Ravens right tackle has been, where Joe Hortiz comes from. Right. So there is rationale to think like they could do it. I, exactly. Like there is all the – and, I mean, Harbaugh has coached against Latham enough where he's he knows what he began. Roman, Greg Roman seems like a little bit of believer in that big mauler type yep. of ex-Baltimore Raven type of O-lineman, right, or the lineman he had with Harbaugh and the 49ers the first time around, which was those type of people. So I know that's that, that was where – that was my decision there. It was trenches all the way. Yep. I know some people put them as receiver. I look at it and go, that doesn't seem like a Harbaugh or, or the GM type of move from their history and who what they believe as as a team. Right. And then my other thought too is like if you want to get an O lineman, you gotta get him there. Right. I, I I think you can you're better off doing the lineman here and then doing the receiver in the second. 37th right, overall pick. Then That's the early. other way around. Yes. Exactly right. And then having a lineman that you're like, well, hey, he's good, but he's not even in the same stratosphere as the guys we were talking about taking a number five. So the Giants at six, this is one of my favorite fits in the draft. Yeah. You have them taking Malik Neighbors. I they, do. they haven't had a threat like this since Odell Beckham. They got, I mean, to me, it's the most glaring thing on their team. You're just like, first off, offensive guy that can make plays. Who Who is that? I know Jalen Hyatt can run, and we got that. Darius Slayton can do that, too. I get it. So we got some people that get some heat to go down the field, but I don't necessarily think those are guys who, like, kind of what you were talking about a minute ago with neighbors in Arizona. They don't have a guy who can run, like, a fake shallow cross, come out, catch the ball, make somebody miss, and now get right. up the field for another 30 yards. That's where you just said Odell Beckham Jr. That's different. Those other guys we just talked about are kind of straight-line speed guys. They're not going to be quite is good running over the middle, the intricate routes, breaking tackles, making things happen after the catch. I, I think neighbors all the way here, and uh, that would be awesome for the Giants to, to add him to the Daniel Jones tool set. Seven, the Titans. Now you have J.C. Latham yeah. come off the board here. The Titans right. could take a tackle for either side. Yeah, right. You know, I mean, again, I almost feel like it's whatever one's left over, whoever the Chargers don't take, right? This right. is what they'll go with. Uh, but it, it's, it's young quarterback. Right, the Callahans. It's they believe in offensive line. There's a, their offensive line's been decimated the last few years. I mean, ever since they had you know the AFC Championship game with Derrick Henry and Ryan Tannehill in 2019, it's slowly taken a hit every year. Whether it's injuries, missed draft picks, letting Jack Conklin go in free agency, they've had it all. Taylor and Lewan retiring, right? So I think it's the thing that needs to be addressed by them in a big way. The one thing that surprised me, yeah. and we'll talk about this with the Falcons too. Yeah. I've heard the Titans are a, a sneaky trade out. Option mm. If somebody actually had a reason to come into seven, I would. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah. I mean, I'm, uh, Callahan's probably very confident that, like, hey, if we 
don't go too far down, I can still find us a really good tackle or lineman that I think fits our football team. You know, and and yeah, I mean, I think as long as you don't, you know, leave I, as long as you don't go past twenty. I feel like you're guaranteed to get somebody pretty damn good, right? And and that's where maybe they they would feel comfortable about that. Eight, the Falcons. You have them stay in put. Another team that's definitely open to answering the phone, but they go with Dallas Turner, which when you look at the fit with Raheem Morris, it's just it makes so much sense because Turner could do a lot of different things. He can, and they just it's a need on their football team. It's like the number one thing you look at to go. They need something at that position. Uh, there's no game-changing presence there, right? I did think about corner here. I'm not going to lie. I thought about it. Quinion? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I, I, I think Quinion Mitchell, Dallas Turner, Byron Murphy, and Latu, to me, are the four best defensive players in the draft, right? And I think that, yes, yes. I mean, a guy like Quinion Mitchell, I think, is in a – in a class of his own at corner right there. So, I, I mean, I, I did. I thought about it. I was like, man, maybe the Falcons would go corner here. But I think all in all, it makes sense for the reasons you said. And Dallas Turner's got some traits about him that are very, very special. Uh, and, and another guy that I would say could be a superstar, but I still think has a very high floor, too. I don't look at him going, oh, he's going to be a bust or anything like that, right? He might not be what we think he might be, but I don't think it's going to be bust is going to be part of this conversation. He's just so gifted yeah. with the length, the speed, exactly. the explosive right, nature. Right. Like, okay, like he doesn't get 15 sacks a year. He gets seven, but he's still your starting outside linebacker for a long, long time. All right, let's move over to the next portion of the draft as we recap one through eight. If you're watching the show, nine, the Bears. This was the first one where I was like, oh, this yeah. is different. Yeah. You have them taking Layatu Latu, the pass rusher from UCLA. I know a lot of people think receiver, right? I look at it and go, how many <laughs> receivers do they need? <laughs> right. I mean, you got you got DJ Moore, you got Keenan Allen, they got Cole Komet. They got Gerald some, Everett's there. They got Gerald Everett. They got v- Visas Jones and some other guys that I think they're thinking like, hey, they can come up the ranks here and help us out. And my other thought, too, is, you know, one, they have a need at this position, this pass rusher. You know, the pass rushers, especially to me, Dallas Turner and Latu, I think – for the most part, are in from most of the people I've talked to a little bit of like, hey, we think they're almost in a tier by themselves. So I'm going to go that thought there, right? From what I've heard from people around the league, and then I think on top of that, like we always always oh, help the young quarterback get him more weapons. Sometimes having the best defense in football it really helps the young quarterback too, right? I, I don't think they're weapon deprived there with what we just said. Right, so now I look at it and go, "Hey, you know what? Help a young quarterback when the other team only scores nine points, and you just have to <laughs> score ten to win. That'll help the other team, your quarterback, right?" So I, I, I look at it as a need of the team. I think the guy is such a damn good player, right? I look at their team and go, "I think they're really close," and I think the other pass rusher is the only thing I look at to go, "They need that," and I go, "Wow, that team is f-ing legit." Him and Montez Sweat would be an exciting, a really exciting duo. And to your point about it, they also pick at 75 if they want that, you know, middle of the roster pass catcher. Like you can get a developmental pass catcher to play behind the veterans at 75. It's not like this is your one chance. Yeah, exactly. In right. a deep wide receiver draft. I think draft. we all look at it and go, yeah, I mean, would we be shocked if they found their third starting receiver at pick 75? Like, no, not Happens all the time. Exactly right. All the time. Exactly. So 10 the Jets, this has been Ugh. one of the most debated. Yeah. People think they can move up for a wide receiver. I think they would love to move back to get more day two capital. I think it's going to be easier said than done. Yep. You have them taking, ironically, my favorite pick for them, yeah. Troy Fatanu from Washington, because Fatanu played left tackle. He could probably truly play all five spots in the I, offensive that, line. That's why I put him there. Right. You know? And and again, I know, hey, listen, are we I went big picture with the Jets. I know Brock Bowers, everybody's saying that, and I can see that. And I think Brock Bowers is is worth the number ten pick. Yeah, he's. I don't think it's crazy. Yeah, but I just the thing I've been saying to people on radio or my friends or whatever else is just go. Are you you're really gonna roll the dice on Tyrone Smith and Morgan Moses (laughs) that they're gonna stay healthy the whole year? I mean, you're really you're gonna do that with a quarterback who's like coming off an injury and older anyways, and a quarterback that I would tell you even before the injury had a hard time standing in the pocket and letting throws happen down the field and letting plays develop. Right. So that's where I just go. To me, it's the smart pick. It's the big picture pick. And it's also even for the short term, 
not as crazy as people think, too, for all the reasons you said. And I think he's one of the probably the safest picks of the draft uh, because of what you talked about, the position versatility, really good, solid football player. Tyron Smith hasn't played a full season since 2015. That's almost a decade ago. That's insane. That's insane. Yes. And the thing I always argue with Fatanu is John Simpson was a fine signing at left guard. Yeah. Troy Fatanu is winning the left guard job over right. John right. Simpson. Right. So your offensive line would be Tyron Smith, Troy Fatanu, yeah. Joe Tipman, Elijah Vera Tucker, Morgan Moses. Yeah. Like that's how Aaron Rodgers is going to have success. I, I I would agree with that totally. Yeah. I mean, you know, so, you know, uh, I I think in their perfect world too, right? Yeah, they'll figure it out. Whatever that goes. I think they're expecting Fountain out. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, Simpson to be their starting guard, right? With what they paid him, right? All those things would tell me that, right? And what I would think is they're almost looking at it like, hopefully, hey, he could come in and maybe he could be the starting right tackle right off the bat or something like that, and we'll have Morgan Moses just as a backup, right? right? And and, and we he don't will have to depend play. on him, right? So. You know, that that's that's interesting, but I also think he's very much, you know, Elijah Vera Tucker ish and that Without versatility. That's my be, for him. It really is. Yeah. I see I, I get it. I see it right away too. Yeah, I think Fatanu and Taliza Fuango, the two offensive linemen play for the Jets at ten. Eleven, all right, the Patriots. Yeah. This was the move back. Yeah. So you have them taking Drake May here. Completely makes sense. Here's my question for you with the Patriots. Right. Say they answer the phone like you think they could. Yeah. Do you think there's a cutoff that they go, we just can't go there? Because, like you said, we still need a guy. And, the, like, 11 might not be the cutoff. Yeah. You got a quarterback fall. Yeah, here. but you're, you have, get, you're there's getting two quarterbacks danger. here. Right. But, right, what is, like, the danger thing? I, I, I think that, like, I mean, I thought about that. One, because I just, I, I come to that thought, right? And, and just two is, like, you know, talking to, to people around the league and, you know, a few people that have a little feel, no New England. Right. I mean, again, I, I made fun of this today on Pro Football Talk. They're going into the year with Jacoby Brissett and Bailey Zappi. They're going to take a quarterback, right? Now, is it here? I would expect so because I think you're in danger if you wait any longer, right? That would that would be the big thing. Okay, you traded. You got the you know the also the 23rd pick right from Minnesota in that trade. But damn, I don't think you're guaranteed of. Yeah, you're you're playing Russian roulette if you think a quarterback's going to be there there, and. Again, with the Drake May thing and the conversation there, hey, uh, the New England would be a spot you'd go, okay, again, Jacoby can start this year. We can work on Drake. And if Drake blows us out of the water in training camp early on in the year, Great. we just make him the starter. Great. But this is a spot where he can develop a little bit. And again, uh, you know, that's where I think I don't think they're comfortable with him at three. I think there's things they like. Things between that, things I've heard. And then Jer- Jared Ma- Gerard Mayo at the owners' meeting bringing up that Drake May is raw and has some things to work on, that was my first big signal of like, oh, they don't want to take Drake May at three. They recognize that there's there's some things that he's got to get get better at and polished at, right? So th- that would be the reason I, I made that happen there. So this is the beginning of yeah. this quarterback trifecta here. Yeah. 12 is the Broncos. Yeah. You have them taking Bo Nix. I do. I, and again, yeah. I no inside info here. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people look at Bo Nix and all these mocks, and listen, I get it. I see it. I'm like, damn, I'm the only one that's I've seen so far that's got Bo Nix going this high, right? But I also look into the same conversation you kind of just talked about. Like, you're going to risk what? Not having one of these guys there later in the round if you want to trade them? They don't have early? a second-round pick. I, so that's what I mean. It's it's To me, it's like, it's go time. Will they maybe trade down, or do they have a feel that maybe Bo Nix could be there in the 20s? And that's acquire the thing picks? I heard. I heard I could if see they that. can get out of the pick, right. they'd feel better about themselves taking, taking him Bo- in the 20s. That's the one thing I heard. I get it. But that's easier said than done. Right. If Quarter, it's, you can't play the ticky-tack game with quarterbacks. I would agree. You, you, do you better with, like, be careful. You could do it with, like, guards. You better be be yeah. careful. Yeah. I, I'm with you. And they need somebody. And, you know, I, I, and I, I look at that. And again, I, you know, maybe they could read the board right and figure that out and drop down and still get them. But I think that's a risky proposition like we talked about. And where I love, like, Bo Nix, I, I, you know, as the more time's gone on, the more I've actually liked him just because, man, the decision making, the throwing, I mean, he really can play the position. And what I do there is I go, Sean Payton needs somebody that can play now. He needs now. 
And that's where I look at Bo Nix and go, hey, he's old, he's mature, he's played a lot. And I think if you took anybody who played the position the most by the book out of these quarterbacks we're talking about, Bo Nix plays the game most by the book, right? He made the most, oh, uh, you know, quick decisions, third read, right? Accurate throws, right? I know he throws screens, but that's he's not installing the offense. I get that, but he's still really good at that. And he's got some playmaking ability to extend plays that I really like. I, I feel like there's there's laying in the weeds for Bo Nix. I think he's the point guard of this quarterback class. Yeah, yeah. Like, I hear you there. Like you don't want him chucking up thirty threes. No, he's not gonna be that like it's not gonna be wow, oh my gosh, yeah. laser, laser. It's gonna be good throw. Ooh, guy good location. Ooh, nice little play, getting out of the pocket, making a throw in the run there. Ooh, I like that. Oh wow, there was a good whoa. That was a good through a comeback. Oh, that was pretty good. Oh, nice little accurate throw. Nice little accurate throw. Right. Oh, nice play with his legs. Oh, another good throw. Right. It's not going to be like, oh, laser, sidearm. Oh, my gosh, Caleb Williams, crossing route, post. Like, it's not going to be that. You're, it's He's going to run the system, and then he's going to make the plays when they're there to be had. Well, that guy goes at 13 to the Raiders. It's Michael Penix. Yeah. You want lasers and big throws. Big throws and big misses. Yeah. It's Michael Penix. That, that, that's it. And, you know, there's some things he's got to clean up with his mechanics. And, and things like that. But at the end of the day, I mean, the pure talent is there. He's made to throw that f-ing football with his left hand. And the Raiders, to me, you know, this would be, this would be, you know, I always used to frame like, you know, beacon of hope, whatever, a guy that you can look at and go, man, the future, we got this guy. This is awesome. I think he's ready to play right away. You got an insurance policy and Gardner Minshew behind him. And of course, Aiden O'Connell there, you're all good to go. But Penix, I look like with, with Bo Nix in a lot of ways where, you know, again, the amount of reps they have, how old they are, the maturity they've shown to this point already, I think they're ready to go and you could start a new era there. Uh, but they need a quarterback. They need something. You know, I thought about doing some other things with them too, but I just came away with it going, man, gosh, if I'm Antonio Pierce and I'm sitting there, I'm going, man, am I we really going to try to – can I win the AFC West or make a run or really stamp my spot as the Raiders head coach with Gardner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell? I'm not sure I would feel that way. No, and he's been pretty vocal. Yeah. You've, you've gotta, you got to go you get a quarterback. Get exactly. you got to make it happen. Exactly. Exactly. All right, 14, the Saints – Byron Murphy comes off the board here. He is the third defensive player off the board in this situation. I, I feel like, you know, there's a cliff here with some of these defensive positions where I, I feel like that would be my one thing when I look at mock drafts and where people have people ranked and go, no, no, these guys are like priority and there's not a lot of them. And Byron Murphy is phenomenal football player. I mean, for me, without a doubt, one of the best players in this draft. I look at the Saints. You look at their football team. They're getting up there in age in the front, right? I mean, you you go through it uh, as far as their football, their, their their whole thing there. I mean, Cam Jordan's coming to an e- coming to an end, right? It's a defensive head coach, right? Yeah, look at some other needs that I think about corner. I did to a degree. But, you know, Paulson and Debo's a baller. They still got Marshawn Lattimore. Right. They got Alante Taylor. They got some other people in the secondary where I went, I don't think that's as desperate a need. The tackle position, I did think about. That's the one I was going to ask you about. Right. I Trevor mean, Penning's been a colossal letdown. A disaster. But are they going to let it go? Are they going to just call it? We'll I don't know. Out. The Ryan Ramscheck injury, right? I don't know there. Andrews Pete's still on the street, I believe, right? Yeah, he is. Where I would go, like, I wouldn't be shocked if he ended up back there. Uh, But, you know, the guard position, they're they're good. Center and two guards between, you know, um, McCoy, McCoy, Ruiz, 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 and Hurst. Yep. They're they're good at guard, right? Ramchek is, so the tackle thing was the other thing I thought about there. I did. But I kind of looked at it and I went, you know what? I don't think they're going to give up on the penning thing quite yet, right? And uh, I look at it as a defensive head coach where the defense started to fall off a little last year. They need some difference-making young studs in the front seven. I know they got Brian Brzee last year, right? Did a good job. Yeah, we'll see where that goes. Need more from him. But, yeah, they need more from him. Now you get another guy like this, right? I, 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 that's, I just thought the talent of the player, the need, 
right? And the fact that we talk about the tackle position, I just went, I think they're going to stand pat with tackle and ride this group out one more year, and I think they make the move for the D tackle. The Saints do pick at 45, so it's not like they're out of range to help their offensive line there. No, no, either. there could be some a, guys there. Like Sue Matia range. He could be there, right? That's his range. You know, I don't know sure. if Jordan Morgan from Arizona be will close. be there. Be close. 35 right? to 45. Right? Yeah, I right know. There's there. a few that, that'll they'll be in that range that should be available. 15, the Colts. This is where Brock Bowers goes. Yeah. Ideal fit. I, I They don't have anything like this, right? You know, their offensive line is pretty damn good. I know I saw Chris Ballard make a comment this week about, hey, they want to protect Anthony Richardson, right? I mean, I don't look at anything like glaring that they need right this second, right? I mean, it, you you tell me if you think there's something they need uh, there. Here's That's, the one right. where I could see them doing it because right. he could also play guard. Right. I could see them knowing what Ballard values yeah. till he's a Fuanga. Yeah, yeah. Just That's the one. Quentin Nelson part two. Right. Right. Like, oh, okay, cool. And Nelson plays on the left side. Well, so I, then it's like, cool, we got it on the right side. I, I, I thought that about that. Be the, that would be the one. Shane if Steichen they, just came from a team in Philadelphia that had just five killers up right front. Down right down. Yeah. You know? But then I also got into... You know, hey, Brock Browers is really good. He's a good run blocker. And, ooh, we got Anthony Richardson. And, ooh, you know, what Jalen Hurts had with Goddard and all of that, another piece to this offensive puzzle of, oh, he's behind the, you know, hey, he, he, Richardson's running the ball. Richardson's running around the edge. It's a bootleg. Oh, Brock Bowers is in the flat. Oh, he fakes to this guy. Brock Bowers is behind the line of scrimmage. He comes out on the other side. There, boom, Brock Bowers. I just think he fits a lot of things there. They don't have a tight end, anything like him. He's extremely talented. If he's a little bigger, I think he's definitely a top 10 pick, probably even higher than that. Um, thought about that O-lineman there, but I just felt like, man, Brock Bowers makes sense for the Colts and, and how they're going to run their offense. 16, you have a trade-up again. Yeah. I do think this team should be aggressive, and I like what you did here for the Eagles coming into Seattle. I pick. got the, the Eagles going up to 16 with Seattle. Um you look at the Eagles and you go, they their team is embarrassingly awesome, right? It's embarrassingly awesome. You're just like, oh my god, it's one stud after another in every position group, right? I mean, I it'll make you drool over them. The only position you don't is corner. That's right. the only one you look at and go, eh, right? Got and old quick. Got old quick. Darius Slade is. He, I think he wants more money. Bradbury didn't play very good. Slay, it's 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 not going to continue to go on an upward trajectory. We're not there at this point in his career. What are we getting? Year 10, 11, right? So I look at it. Bold move. That's what the Eagles do. And I. This is clearly the. I, I think you could argue this is the best defensive player in the draft. That's what I think of Quinion Mitchell. I think for a lot of people, I know he's top two or three as far as their defensive players yeah. are concerned. And, you know, good corners are not easy to find. They're not. Good man-to-man -man cover corners. And this guy's special, and I think the Eagles are going to make, make a move here with their embarrassment of riches and, and get up there and get them. The Eagles have two second-rounders, pick 50 and pick 53. So if they want to go, they can. That, they, got, they got the ammo to that's, do it. That was part of my reasoning behind it. The, the thing, and, you know, and, and probably a player or two that they could throw in, too, that it, if they're one of their embarrassment of riches. I don't know who that would be, but that's all I'm saying is they can easily make this move. There's no doubt about that. 17, Jacksonville Jaguars. You have them taking one of my favorite corners in the draft. If he could just get a little bit bigger, that's Nate Wiggins uh -huh. out of Clemson. Uh -huh. like, Not I, a lot of guys move like this. No, I was a little stuck with them. I wasn't sure what to do. I kind of came back to my same thought here a little bit of like, one, it's easily their biggest positional need in my opinion. I'm almost positive it'll be corner. Yeah, you think it'll be corner? I'm it's one of the well, teams I feel the best about. That's why I had the Eagles moving up in front of them. Right. That's, that's why thinking. I did it because I yeah. was like, wait, the Eagles, if they want to make a move for one of these corners, and I would think they like Quinion Mitchell, they're going to go, ooh, the Jags are going to take Quinion Mitchell. We need to go in front of them. So that's why I did it. And, you know, I know that they're looking at that position anyways, of course, the Eagles. And I'm, that's not groundbreaking news. So that's why I did that. But now you look at the Jaguars and go, oh, man, that messes up their plans. What would they do? Right? I still have Roma Dunze on the board. Would they go receiver? I certainly thought about that. I don't think they're doing O-line. I don't think so. They made some moves in free agency. They drafted a first-round tackle last year. Right? Cam Robinson's coming back from injury. I don't think that's the move. Right, but I could be wrong. 
<laughs> have a uh, lot of money tied into this group. That's that's what like I, I that, that's where I was like, are they going to really go into that again? Right, more assets there from left tackle to right guard. They are all paid. So all paid, and then the other ones, their first rounder from last year, Anton Harrison, right, right, right tackle. So I just look, I can't imagine that. And corner is clearly the the spot to look at there. Um, you know. I would have D tackle would have been on my radar, but they got Eric Armstead, right? I don't think they're going to go pass rusher here. They need a true cover corner, and Nate Wiggins after Quinion Mitchell is, for my money, clearly the best man to man cover corner, not named Mitchell. Yeah, and for the people that have the concerns about the size, I'll say this about Nate Wiggins: he doesn't turn 21 until the end of his first training camp. Yeah, he's one of the youngest right. players in the draft. Yeah, so if you're looking to buy in gonna, and believe he's going to get bigger and stronger, he's really young. Well, and what, what like you know. One, like I think that stuff's like over talked about anyway. Right, right. Especially in this league. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, I you know again, yeah. He'll be one eighty, you know, probably in another right. two years, year and a half, right? But man, there's a lot of good corners that are one eighty, one seventy nine. Right, it's not that far off here, uh, and the way he moves and runs is is special. It it really is. Like I, I wanted to say, like. What what a dairy I wonder what Darius Slay weighed coming out, but he was probably like one ninety, I'm gonna say. I can't remember exactly, but you know, that that's a guy that he kind of reminds you of when you watch him on film. Um Slay was one ninety two. One ninety two, okay. So he was yeah, that's twenty pounds. That's that that's a difference, certainly. You know, but he wasn't it, as tall. Slay's under six feet say, tall. Under so yeah, he's five eleven mm-hmm. and change. Yep. Right. And, you know, again, sometimes I think this is like I don't know how you feel. It's like us talk. It's scout talk. It's all that. Like, we're not getting this guy to tackle. Right. I'm not getting this guy to, like, set the edge against the Titans and right. Bill Callahan. Be across from the number one right. wide receiver and run, run with, with him. him all day. Exactly right. Calvin Ridley, we got to play him now. you got to run with him when he runs yeah. 60 yards down the field and Levis throws a bomb. You so, know who misses tackles yeah. plenty? Sauce Gardner. It, well, uh, most good corners do. And who cares? Right. Because he's one of the best corners in the NFL. Exactly right. All day long. Exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. Deion Sanders, as Peter yeah. reminds us. Right. All right, I got to ask you about 18. I want to yeah. spend time on this. Yeah. Bengals at 18. Roman Dunze. Yeah. I think if he's there, it makes a ton of sense. Yeah. Is this one where you got to this point in the draft and you're like, you know what? I just didn't find a place for Roman Dunze. Or is this some of, hey, you never know. Like a guy could, there's always a guy each year that we didn't see coming that falls. I, I feel like there always is that, right? Um, it it kind of worked more the the first way you said it. This is yeah. not like an inside info or an inkling. Here's one thing I do know. I don't think I think everybody likes a Dunze. I just think everybody likes him in a different area, right? So I'm like I don't know if like those one or two teams we talk about in the top 10 that might take him. If they don't take him, then where does he go? And I right. think this is kind of where the area he would start to come back into the conversation again. I feel like you know, I could be wrong there, and 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 everybody has them as a first round grade. But I feel like the people even I talk to, you know, some have them in the okay, maybe he's eight to twelve, and then I have others that are like, no, we think he's kind of in like uh, low twenties, mid twenties type of pick, right? So that's where you know it kind of worked out that way organically for me. But then I looked at it. You look at Cincinnati, right? I kind of looked at their board. What would they might need? Where would they go here? Right. You know, you're getting into last year, the T Higgins thing with the franchise. Tyler Boyd's gone. Uh, Joe Burrow is clearly the strength of their football team. I don't know if I really saw, you know, D tackle. I thought about, right. That was part of Murphy's gone. Murphy's gone. You know, I, so that was part of the combo there. Um, I thought about tackle a little bit. Yeah. Like an Amarius Mims. Exactly. Right. But, you know, again, come back to it and go, they're not like desperate at line. Right. And, you know, they did, they, they, they got Orlando Brown. They got three interior O linemen right. that are pretty good. The kid Carmen Jackson's still there. You know, I, I felt like this one would be one where they just couldn't pass it up with Bubba Trent Brown. being on the board. And Trent Brown. I knew I was missing right. a Brown. Yeah, that's the right, right tackle. So they're not desperate. I think if they, if they drafted they, Marius Mims, they'd have the three biggest, biggest people in, in the world. In earth, on right, earth. right. I know. I mean, th- <laughs> there would be another one where I'd go, they're not desperate there. They can get the receiver here and maybe get an offensive lineman in the second, do something like that to you know add a little depth and feel better about the position overall. All right, let me walk the people through the next scenario. Yeah, yeah. So you had the Seahawks trade out of 16 with the Eagles. Yeah. That sent them to 22. Right. Now you have the Rams trade with Seattle. Yeah. Right. Right. So the Seahawks now are back up to 19. Yes. 
from 22. A little bit of Arizona style last year. Exactly. Bounce around the board. What what did you have them do that for? Well, I got a, I got into this here a little bit with the Seahawks just because, yeah, got them dropping down after that trade, but also them sitting there going, wait, you know, we need an interior offensive lineman in a bad way, and some of these teams that we just traded behind also need offensive linemen. Miami? And, right, exactly. So they could be stealing our guy here or whatever, right? Because after this is Steelers, Dolphins, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Steelers and Dolphins right after this, who we both, I think, would agree are certainly heavily in the offensive line conversation. For sure. Right? So that's why I did that. And then I look at Seattle and I went, wait, it could be guard or tackle. I don't know. Right? Abraham Lucas was hurt last year. You know, they got crossed to left tackle. I So I was like, I think they're going to go inside interior here. Oregon State's right around the corner. This guy can also play tackle right. like if he needs to, right? So that's where I went with them with Fulwaga. Uh and I think they'll make him guard is what I would what I would want to do. Like you just talked about with him and the Colts, right? And now you got two pretty big dime tackles. You got him at guard and you got something working there. I also think I like the thought with the Rams too. I think the Rams will be really flexible. They're in no man's land at 19. I I think so too. Whether it's up or down, right? I think we'll see a lot of flexibility with. The I Rams. looked at them and just they're they're in a spot there too where, yeah. As I looked at the Rams and got them trading back down to 22, I went. They need to me front seven. Period. Yeah. And there's a number of guys on the board at front seven. And then I looked at it and went. They're going to feel good that the Steelers and Dolphins are not going to be drafting front seven. So. They could still get the same player that they wanted at 19 at 23 or 22, excuse me. And that's why I did that. All right, 20, the Steelers. You have them getting what I think is one of the better values of this draft. Yeah, I mean, he's another, he's a, he's a, by a lot of people looked at as the safe guy because the way he pass protects, right? Uh, Oli Fashanu, right? Fashanu. Yeah, fa- you had it the first time. I Fashanu. Fa- Olu fa- sh- uh, Fashanu. Fashanu. Yeah. It is Fashanu. Yeah. Olu I, I think I started off the wrong way and yeah. then got to the right way and went by. But it's Olu. Yep. Um, but uh, either way, yes, got him going there, right? Now, here's another one that I would tell you is a little all over the place with some of my friends that I talk to in the NFL. Oh, the variance on him is insane. It, it really is. I know people that are like, not my type in the first round. I know people that are like top 15 pick every day. Exactly. Like, I lean more. I think he's a top 15 it, pick. I don't think he will be. I think he's somewhere in between You're for right. me. Right? Right here. Right? Because some of my, yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> some of my, yeah, the, the, you said it right. I've had some people go like, we think he's one of the safer tackles in the draft. And I've had others go, we think he's a second round pick. Yes. And I was like, oh, okay. All right? So, there, you know, I think the teams that value run game and all that really don't like That's the o- issue. Olu. That's, that's the problem, the issue. right? Yeah. And and so th- that that's the problem. But either way, the Steelers have a need there. You know, I'm a little bit of a sucker of like, hey, we're Pittsburgh. Hey, Penn State's right down the road. We got all the inside info on this guy. We've been watching him for a while. So I went with that and, uh, you know, had them address the offensive line issues. So probably Broderick Jones at right tackle? I think so. I think Olu's a true left Left, tackle. I think so too. Agreed. Agreed. So, yeah, I, w- I would imagine it to be that happening that way. I thought about interior O-line. You know, I, all of those things went to, went to my thought process, but I think there was a little more desperation here of getting the tackle for the future here more than anything, and that's where they go with uh, Olu. 21, the Dolphins. This is just one of those picks that it just makes so much sense with Graham Barton, elite athlete, another guy probably going to play guard, but in a pinch could probably survive at tackle, yeah, which right. is where he played for Duke. Could even play center, I or think. Could definitely right? play center. You know, I think that's, that's where I like it. They need somebody that's just going to work no matter what, yeah. and that's where like, Graham, Gar- Graham Barton's safe that way. And whether that is to play tackle and maybe he can do that right, I don't think it's his best spot. I think you agree with me there. I do. I evaluate but, him as a guard. Yeah, I think he's a guard as well, right? And and they need that. You know, again, it, it you know one they need a little everything. They you know they lost their center from last year. He's not there, right? You know, Connor Williams, who's still dealing with an injury and rehabbing that. All right? They lost their guard Hunt to the Panthers. Hundred million dollar man. Hundred million dollar man, right? I mean, you know, left tackle Teron Armstead has been hurt a lot, right? It has got to be O line here. You know, Dolphins are one of those teams. You know, 
I, I when I first started the process, I was like, would they trade up to Little to make sure they get the tackle they want? Um, but I also was like, Dan, I don't, I don't know. They got enough things to to worry about on their football team. Just stay there, want to fall down because they lost Christian Wilkins too. Yeah. So at some point, they're gonna need a little bit of D line uh-huh. depth. Right. Twenty two, the Rams. This is them moving back three spots because of the Seattle trade. You have them taking Darius Robinson from Missouri, who's played. Uh, D tackle and edge pass rusher. Yeah, as well. he's played all up and down the line of scrimmage. It, he kind of fits both as far as edge D tackle. I can look at him more as a D tackle, but I certainly think he could play on the edge in certain defenses and and formations and personnel sets or whatever else. There, I love Darius Robinson. I think he is a awesome football player. No Aaron Donald as we know there, right? You know, I know they got uh, their kid last year. Um, Kobe oh, Turner, Kobe Turner, right? right? Steel, yeah, draft. who had a had a like you know a really awesome year. I thought about pass rusher here, right? I thought about did, maybe would they go Jared Verse, right? Uh, I I certainly thought about that, or maybe even a Chop Robinson, something there. But I I I feel like Robinson, Darius Robinson, is a little bit of a notch up for me as a player compared to those guys. And I look at it and go, wait, he can kind of do D end and D tackle and almost fit two needs in one for this football team. Uh, I kind of went that way. Right. And I think to your point, they they took Byron Young last year. Right. Who's kind of that explosive. An explosive edge guy. Wide alignment exactly. guy. Pass right. rusher first. Right. You've talked about Michael Hoyt on this podcast. Very yeah. unconventional 300-pound stand-up rusher. Yeah. So then a guy like uh, Darius Robinson, a little more heavy handed. Yeah. Right. It gives you a not your more... pass rusher extraordinaire. No, but he can draw a little he, more. Exactly right. I mean, I, I think he could play three technique and be awesome there. And then he's going to be able to two gap. Like he, yes. he'd probably be the best two gapping D lineman you're going to see in this draft. Because once, like you said, heavy handed, when he gets his hands on people and his arms are straightened out, like, I don't give a shit who you are. You're he, you're going for a ride on the Darius Robinson cartwheel. He's going to throw you around a little bit. And I think that's where he's he's made for that. And they asked their guys to do some of that stuff there. So 23, the Patriots get to pick again from the Minnesota trade. And, man, do they need a left tackle yes, in they the do. worst way. And you have them taking Amarius Mims. Amarius Mims. I love Amarius Mims. You know, I thought about the Oklahoma kid maybe just because I know Amarius Mims has a little bit of the injury concern, right? right. We talked about this, though. But he's it's, just better. It, he is. He's better. Agreed. I mean, Marius Mims, for me, pass protection-wise, like, ready, day one. It's like two people. It's an, he's phenomenal. People. He really is. And, you know, a lot. I saw the improvement of the year. Uh Huge body, right? They believe that up in New England. I, I just they, it's a big need there. I, I think that's a no brainer. I think I've told you this before yeah. for Patriots fans listening because they probably were like, "Oh, well, he played right tackle. We need a left tackle." Mims told me he practiced forty percent of the time at left at tackle. Left? Wow! At his practices at yeah. Georgia, yeah, those practices are just different there. Like they get those guys tailor made for the NFL, right? So this dude, he truly can play either side. Yeah, and I feel like you know guys like that. Again, this is. It's a less drastic transition than, let's just say, dribbling with your left hand. Right. I mean, it really is. It's, it's, we sometimes, I think, make a little bit too big of a deal about it, right, where it's like, no, the really good ones, these guys we're talking about right here, they don't it's, – it's not that big of adjustment to shuffle right or, oh, no, I got to go to the other side and shuffle left. Yeah. It's not as big as I think sometimes everybody makes it out to be. 24, the Cowboys, you keep the tackle run going. This is where Tyler Guyton goes, the one-year starter right tackle from Oklahoma. Yeah, uh, I mean, again, O-line definitely need there in Dallas. Yeah. And, I, I, you know, I thought about pass rusher here too. I did. I, you know, I think that was one area I looked at. Uh, I looked, you know, was, you know, there's no safety or anything like that that jumps out to you. Too early for a center. They have nothing at center, I, but it's early. I know, and like yeah, nothing. <laughs> I, you know, again, like the kid from West Virginia or uh, Jackson Powers Oregon. Johnson, right? I was on. I thought about them. I did. You know, ultimately, I think they're kind of like mid-second round guys. I think you know, yeah. right? Somewhere around thirty-eight, we start to see those two guys go, and I just went eh, tackle. Hey, you do that. Maybe you get a guy here. It's your your starting left, starting right, whatever you want to do there. Either way, they got to figure out what they want to do with Tyler Smith. I guess they're going to move him to tackle. I'm expecting right. The weak link of the team last year on the all offensive line was Steele at right tackle. Yeah, he was an issue, 
And not only one do they just need more bodies and players altogether, like you're saying, I just didn't see the interior guy that made sense there with the value of that pick right there. So that's where I went with Tyler Guyton, who who I like and is extremely athletic. And another guy I would go, needs work in the run game and stuff like that. But pass protection-wise, I think he's pretty damn close to being ready to go. 25, the Packers, Cooper DeGene. Who yeah. can do everything for that secondary that kind of needs that chess piece player. I the the Packers are another team that when you when you start to look at their roster and you break them down, you start to go, they're a really well put together football team. They right? are, yeah. right? Like I, I you know, I thought I another team that I thought about O line, I looked at it, but I don't think they're desperate on O line. It's one of the better O lines in football. Let, let's just state that clearly. One needs to fall. Like yeah. if Graham Barton just fell into their lap, then that's maybe. their type. Sure. Maybe. Right. Right. I mean, uh, uh, I, I could see that. Okay. You know, and I, I saw some people that had him like, you know, taking a tackle or or doing stuff like that. I mean, again, with the way mine fell out, there's no tackle to me that makes sense there. Right. Um, and you you look at it. I Corner, secondary player. I thought about Terry on Arnold. Right. Would that make sense here? They got Cassine Nixon. Right. They got. Uh, Stokes still there, who's a first round pick from Georgia. They of course got Jair Alexander, yeah. right? You know, I know they got Xavier McKinney. I got that. But you look at their team, they don't need a ton. And Cooper DeGene can kind of be like you said, that I can be safety, I can be strong safety, I can be in the a nickel in a certain situation. I can formation. cover Sam Laporta. Exactly. He's going to be able to cover tight ends. Right. You know, so Hawkinson, Laporta, he's going to have to he'll be able to man up. Right. Six games a year are those three. So I, I certainly can see that. And um, smart football player, really damn good athlete. Just don't want him outside playing corner. You kind of want him in those positions we talked about there. Um, yeah, Cooper DeGene, Packers. 26, the Bucks get pass rush help. I think this is an area they they really need. And Jared Verse falls to 26, which I, would be great for I, them. I mean, it would. Do you, I, I mean, did, you know, I don't. I certainly seem to be in the negatives or more yeah. low on him than others. Um, it kind of fell this way naturally for me. I think that Jared Verse would be another guy that, you know, a little bit all over the place where some people might like him in the mid teens or whatever, you know, but I think there is a group of people that think he's right around this range too. And it kind of just happened that way. But I mean, they need somebody. Shaq Barrett, gone, right? You know, previous Jay- picks haven't worked. Exactly right. They've tried Tryon this a lot. Goes, just, just, you know, the Houston solid kid. player. The Houston kid, Logan, right? Yes. You know, hasn't really worked that way either. And he's kind of like a hybrid DN tackle. They need a true pass rusher. And that's where I think Jared Verse set, fits in real well. 27, the Cardinals back on the clock. They took Marvin Harrison Jr. at four. Here you have them go corner with Terry on Arnold. Yeah, I mean, this is one I went back and forth with. Right. I, I mean, Terry on Arnold, here's what I'm not. A, I don't think Terry on Arnold should be drafted here. OK, that, I'm, I'm just going to be plain, plain and simple. But I know I'm in, in the minority there. I know. And I know from too many people that it sounds like he's going in the first round. Yeah. Right. So you look at them and you go corner is a position they truly do need to address. Right. There, there's there's not a lot there as far as Arizona and looking at it. And I do look at him and go, he's a safe, smart guy with a guy like Jonathan Gannon, who does a lot of different stuff on defense. You know, they they certainly need a nickel type of football player. And again, I think just smart, good football player that fits what I would think is the Monty Austin Fort kind of formula for guys coming from New England and what he yeah, does. Like steady. That's exactly. Steady, safe, going to be able to handle all our multiple defenses and all of that. So that's where I went with Terry on Arnold. That's why I think Cam or Kool-Aid is in play at this pick. I, I think both Alabama guys are in play. I, I, I hear you. And, you know, I almost put Kool-Aid with a team here down at the end, but I, 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 I ended up not going against it. But, I, yeah, I certainly could see them being a part of that conversation there. 28, if this yeah. happens for the Bills, well, they yeah. won the first round. No doubt. Brian Thomas Jr. falls to 20. If you would have asked me this two, three weeks ago, it was, there's no way this happens. Right. Right. I've told you that <clears throat> I definitely know people that Brian Thomas is way up there <clears throat> as far as what they think of him as a receiver. Right. That was one of the things that when people, when I left my receiving rankings, I got a lot of feedback on that one. He has off the field. He has, he has an injury concern. Okay. Right. 
I don't think it's like a huge one, but I know I've learned that from multiple teams that right. there is an off the field injury thing. Like there. not top fifteen. Not top like lock. people aren't gonna be feel feeling comfortable there. So this is where I think he can kind of fall to, right? Um but yeah, I was made aware of that. I'm gonna say about I came in here one day and told my people, I've had people reach out to me, say there's an off the field thing. And I told them and they're like, oh, you always like the guys with the off the field problems. That's what they, they uh, like Matt Casey and Pete made fun well, of me he's for. Well, six three and runs 4'3". Yeah, so right, yeah, right. I was like, I don't football. know. I just like that, right? But, but th- then I came to find out as I text people back, like, what's the deal? It seems like there's an injury thing there, uh, a little bit of a concern there, and I think that's why I, you know, of course that's why I got them falling down. The Bills at wide re- with wide receiver at 28 feels like a lock. I would call closest I, it, thing to a lock. I, 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 I would think so, right? Don't know if they'll get this lucky. Maybe. Yeah. I know. Maybe. I know. And, you know, yeah, I mean, if it's not him, I mean, would they go or pass rusher or do they go to the Adane Mitchell? That's Xavier what Worthy, I think. Yes. Something like yes. that. Right. Exactly. It's all, all in play there. 29, the Lions. You have this a fit that I've really liked as well. Uh, I did a what I would do mock draft and had this pick. Chop Robinson, pass rusher from Penn State. Because with uh, Aiden Hutchinson across the way, now you just have an explosive guy that things are kind of watered down of what you're asking him to do. I, I, I mean – Another team that you look at and go pretty well built. Right. This is brought the only spot that I look at to go, okay, they could use an upgrade here, right? You know, he's a totally different animal than Aiden Hutchinson, like you said. And, yeah, you can play him on the weak side and go, hey, you don't have to worry about the run game as much and fly up field and get after it, right? Cause some disruption, yeah, and I think fast. it's an area of their football team that you know needs an improvement. I, you know, uh, other positions I thought about with them, like right. I mean, you know, D tackle. They're 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 stacked at D tackle. I don't think there's a corner there that makes sense for them. Plus, they did a lot in the free agency with corner, where I don't think they're desperate to address this need in the first round. The Lions are a team that I certainly sat here and thought they could trade out of the first round. Certainly. I could see it. I wouldn't Looking be at the shocked. roster now. Right. The Lions fans will be pissed off uh, to sit there and wait for that pick and then not, not have them do it. But, yeah, there's not a lot of desperate needs on this Lions football team. Okay. Th- uh, 30, the Ravens. This is where you had Adonai Mitchell come yeah. off the board. The Ravens yeah. need a wide receiver for sure, and he's got size and speed. His size and speed, they don't really have that guy like him. You know, Rashad Bateman – it's it's injured a lot, and this is the last year, right? This is this is year four. That for was him. fast, yeah. Right. So I, I think it's a little bit more of a look of the future, and you know, a little bit something of as far as dependability to go here. Uh, another team, though, I look at and when you know they could trade out here. They they could, you know, offensive line certainly they need some bodies there. Uh, I think there's probably guys here in Baltimore that they like that we're not sure how much they like them like right. Andrew Voorhees who they stashed last they year they always have those but is going to play right tackle exactly they like, are the epitome of like next man exactly up. yeah you know so that's where I kind of go like I don't know if they're that desperate to get the old lineman there and I don't know if anybody really meets that need right there for what they really need uh Mitchell's got big time potentials not my favorite guy you, yeah, you we, know we that saw it on yeah that. too much coasting too much coasting right but there is big time potential the body the speed the measurables and numbers, all of that are definitely first round worthy. You know what's really interesting about yeah, this? Yeah. Mitchell was at Georgia when Todd Munkin oh, was the shit. offensive coordinator. Shit. So if Mitchell's on the board yeah. and they don't take him, that's a big sign. Right. You know, like that's what's, when you made this pick, I'm like, man, we're going to know. Like we're going to learn either way. We're definitely going to know. Todd, and then Mitchell transferred to Texas. Right. Right. Um, so we'll see. It's going to be really interesting. It'll that be one. very interesting. 30, speaking of interesting, 31, 49ers, probably one of the bigger surprise picks in round one. Roger Rosengarten, the other tackle from Washington. Really athletic dude. Athletic dude. I know that's Shanahan likes him. I thought about, I I mean, again, the 49ers, and I know everybody thinks I always have inside info on the 49ers. (laughs) I am more clueless on the 49ers than any other team in the draft, okay? Right. This is what I, this is what happens when you're really close to people. You don't talk about you those don't things. talk about yes. it at all. And I don't want to talk about it and I don't want to know about it. And my friend, I think, is avoiding me anyways, because he <laughs> doesn't want to say something and then have me kind of like figure it out, you know, by knowing my friend. So I, I thought about Jordan, Jordan Morgan from Arizona. It's a fit. I, I, I certainly thought about that. I just went with the guy like I thought Jordan Morgan he can play left tackle. I think he's more of a guard. 
I went with the guy that I thought is just more of the true tackle in Rosengarten. That's why I did it. But I thought about Kool-Aid here because there is – they do need some secondary help. I think Traverius wore this the last year of his contract, I believe. And there's somebody else, if I can remember off the top of my head, which I can't, who's also on the last year of their deal in the, in the secondary, where I thought about Kool-Aid – but I just thought, man, offensive line needs to be addressed, and I'm going to go with Roger Rosengarten. Whenever I run into this situation, if uh, the corner from Clemson, Nate Wiggins, is there, that's where I have yeah, every time. There. But yeah, he's yeah. probably just too good that he shouldn't be there. Yeah. Let me, let me no, ask no, you. No, no, no. I've had – I don't think you're crazy with your Nate Wiggins thing, right? I've had people definitely ask me, do you think Nate Wiggins goes – in the end of round one, right? So there's definitely that thought out there of will he be that, right? And I think between the size, like you talked about, and then, hey, there's th this to me, this is where he was different than Quinn. Quinn Young Mitchell competed in your face every play, and he doesn't want anybody or anything. Nate Wiggins got a little bit of like, hey, he's awesome, and he's got a lot of great plays, right? But I think the other thing, too, when you watch Nate Wiggins, this is why you, you got to watch games. You know, he got a little bit, I think, of, hey, let's just attack the other corner, Right, we're not going to attack you. We're just going to go to the other side. And he got some free passes there. And I think if you look at some of the balls that weren't thrown his way, like you know, that was one of the things that jumped out to me. Where I was like, oh, this guy's open here. They just don't want to go there because it's Nate Wiggins, and they're yeah. going, this is easier. But here's an out route that's open against Nate Wiggins. Here's a comeback that's open against Nate Wiggins. Again, there's still a lot of good. I'm just telling you why I think some teams are a little bit like he's not a definite, you know, top 22 pick or something like that. Any chance yeah. it's wide receiver. Mm, I, I thought about it, right? Because of the Ayuk situation. It's just getting worse by the day. And the fact that, like, we, at least me, I think this is Debo's last year with the Niners. I, I wouldn't be shocked by that either, right? right? I know, so I, I did. I thought about it. I, I wouldn't, like, I thought about, so a, a Mitchell was gone. That's and I makes went, tough. man, would Shanahan want Xavier Worthy? Right. And I, I just, actually think no. I don't think so either. Play strength doesn't really. That, that's I look like at like tough, I look at like Jalen Polk as their type, mm. but maybe they think, hey, we can get Jalen Polk later, so we wouldn't do that. I, I don't disagree with you that right. it'd be their type. Yeah. I mean, re really good route runner can it's do that. One of the that's best they, run blockers in the draft. That's what they value, right? Yeah, like so, jack of all trades. I, but so yes, all those thoughts went through my head, right? And then I was like, I even thought about. The Receiver from South Carolina. Oh, Xavier Leggett. Because I was like, damn, I mean, he's just, he's got some Debo ish does, about they him. They use him like except that. Except he's got better long speed than Debo, right? Yeah. You know, but, but yeah, ultimately, I went with the O lineman just because it, I feel like it's still the biggest need on their football team. To close this thing out, the Chiefs at 32. I, I think this is one of the best values of the draft. I really like this player. Yeah. You have them taking Jerzon Johnny Newton, D tackle from Illinois. You know, I think it's, a, again, another team where, of course, it's, it's pretty well built. Right. I don't uh O line, I know that's you know, maybe something you could look at there. I don't think that makes sense. And then D tackle if I had a thing about their team towards the end of last year, is just you wish they hey, if Chris Jones isn't in there, you worry about them, right? And hey, we're getting up there in age with all these guys. I mean, you know, Tershawn Wharton's no young spring chicken, yeah. but you know Pinnell's Chris Jones and Mike Pinnell has been forever. <laughs> exactly right. So they gotta get younger and some better depth there. And yeah, Jerzon can you know, he can stop the run, and he's got true pass rush ability on the interior side. So I, it's a great spot for him. I'd I, I like to see that happen for the Chiefs. All right, let's break down your mock draft. Boom. Uh, number of players by position, nine, and we'll recap the whole thing right here if you're watching. Uh, so a couple notes here. Number of players by position, nine offensive linemen, six guys you view as tackles, three as guards, six quarterbacks. This would be the second draft ever with six quarterbacks in round one that was 1983 Oof. five wide receivers that was a good draft four edge pass rushers four defensive backs three no safeties unless you count well you counted cooper de Jean as I'm kind a, of a, I'm, he's a safety so he'd for be me. the only one right I thought about Enos Rake Straw a little bit yep. with some of these teams at the end, right? But I just felt like it's not a first rounder. He'll be somewhere in the top 10, 12 picks of the season. Yeah, second. him and Kool Aid did not make the first round. Right. Three defensive tackles, one tight end, of course, Brock Bowers. To the surprise of no one, no running backs, no off ball linebackers. 
Yeah, I, I, do. I don't think that's happening. No, I can confidently say there will not be a first round running back. The only guy, if there's going to be an off ball linebacker, and I still say it won't happen, would be Junior Colson from Michigan. Yeah, well, he, he could sneak in. He's he's the guy. I think he's awesome. Yeah, but like it's just the position. Right. Yeah, I don't think he's a first rounder to no. your point. But yeah, to me, he was he was as I said on the pod. I said we did linebackers a little last week. I said that that would be my first pick off the board. He's the only guy that's a true middle linebacker they could trust and can kind of do it all there. But yeah, I think that's more. Or like mid-second probably. No way running back or linebacker, right? The tight end thing is definitely just one. Um, and then, you know, I, I think like, you know, you look at D tackle too. I don't think there's – I think the big thing there is, is just, it, we know it's two. I don't think there's any doubt that Byron Murphy and Darius Robinson go. Does Jerzon go? I think he sneaks in. Yeah, I know. There's a little bit yeah. – like he's right in that range, right? And I think so too because, again, big people like that that can move like that, there are not a lot of them out there in the yeah. world. He so played some running back in high school. I heard that. That's yeah. insane. It's, I mean, you watch him chase sideline to sideline, it kind of like – that I, light comes I, on. I know. Every it's now crazy. and then and the way he can just kind of turn the corner on a guard and pass rush for some big, strong, powerful strides. I, I certainly could see that athletic ability. That was a lot of fun, dude. That Thanks, was uh, I'm glad it's done. Yeah, it's 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 a like long, tedious process. It definitely it? is. And you start to like, did I set this up the wrong way? Did I second guess this? Yeah. Wait, I don't want to be holding to I, you know, what I've seen so much. I know that I've seen 10 mocks that have this guy here, but who the hell says any of them are right? Right? You try to take away all that. Here's the other thing that I found interesting too. And I texted this to the group the other day. You know, when I really started to do it, I didn't have 32 first round grades. I I, I, I never do. I I, I always have twenty to twenty four. Yeah, I had like twenty six or seven, yeah. I think. Right, and you know, you know, maybe one or two guys right on the edge there. Um, but you know, as you look at that, and I think that's why I ended up having some of these defensive guys, and maybe even some of the old linemen go a little earlier, just because. Again, I think there's a premium on, on, on them. And then those two positions, I think it falls off pretty quick to where teams are going to be pretty antsy to get their hands on one of them. All right, everybody's probably wondering the plan for this week. Oh, so here's yeah. all our promo stuff, yeah. right? To find all the 2024 NFL draft content from Unbuttoned, Fantasy Football Happy Hour, PFT, and more, NBCSports.com slash NFL Draft. Of course, everything's there. Wednesday. Everything. You got a final draft AMA. Yeah. And Jay Croucher. Oh, are, yeah. Are I'm gonna save Australian. that clip. I'm going to, I'm going to, I want to listen to that clip again with yes. Jay here. Yeah, but don't tell him. Just have him sit on the desk. And, okay. Yes. Yeah. Just let it start. He referenced Go. some movie director. Yeah. He's always got a movie or NBA reference. I know about one out of every 12 of yeah. them. Yeah. So okay. That's, yeah. So All that's right, good. 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 So Jay will be on with you. He'll go through the draft props. Thursday night, you and Ahmed. Pick yeah. reactions from the barn again. I watched those from last year. It's great. Hilarious. Thank Excellent you. content. Thank you. Uh, Florio pick reactions from his barn. Yeah. Dueling barns. I like it. I know. It's good living. I know. Good I mean, living. We couldn't get Florio to talk about the draft two years ago. Now he wants he's to make videos the business? in the barn. Everybody's in we the draft We literally, business. Matt Casey will tell you, he's sitting up there <laughs> in the office. We literally, m- night before the draft one year, the rundown came down, right, for the pro football talk show. And draft was, of course, the big part of the car. And he didn't want to talk about it. He was like, I don't want to talk about the draft. It's a crapshoot. Oh, my gosh. Blah, blah, blah. And we were like, what? And, like, he was really adamant about fighting with us for a little while, right? Matt Case is <laughs> giving the middle finger to me up there because he's like, you're telling my secrets out loud. Uh, we just won't show Florio this clip. He doesn't watch. But, yeah, he didn't want to do it. Now he's <laughs> making videos in the barn like he's Johnny Draft expert. The day he writes a mock draft, like, we're really, we've really, you know, converted him. He, he's going to, but he oh. outsources it. Oh, okay. He sources it. He tells everybody, but then when he gets one right, he goes, "Hey, my mock draft. I had that guy going there." Because he has good you information. You can't make that shit up with so him. He, like a mock draft from Florida. He would be should really be making a mock draft. He has draft. great information. Exactly. He's exactly. somebody that you want to read a mock draft. Exactly. From. Yeah. He's over here, and, you know, leading the revolution though on the draft and <laughs> the and war, we're trying the great to, war against we're the trying NFL to get draft. It on it. Me, Jay, uh, and Barry will be here doing reactions for every pick from the happy hour. So we don't have cool. a barn. All right. Yeah, Are we you going to have, have drinks? Are you going to have a real drink there? That's a good question. Can you have that here? I, it would be a nice touch. I mean, I'll ask this yeah, year. Yeah, you we should. Had, we, had, we had pizza last year. We'll have drinks and smokes at my place. Now, you guys do it right. That's <laughs> the way to the draft. Before we get out of here, one AMA. This is from uh, okay. Lee Eisen. Months ago, I made plans with a friend who was visiting L.A. for one night. I didn't realize that night was April 25th, night one of the NFL draft. She doesn't care about football. 
How do I explain that watching the draft is the closest thing I have to a religious holiday? Wow. You have to cancel the plans. Well, no, no, right? No, you gotta, you gotta, no, you gotta. To me, what I leave, what I'm seeing, seeing here, is you, you can't cancel the plan, right? It's a friend, unless you feel like, hey, this person's so cool that they're cool with me canceling it. Yeah. Oh, visiting LA is tough, though. I didn't see that. I didn't double read that part. This you can't, is can't cancel a trip. You gotta infuse just, hey, we're gonna go to a party together. We're going somewhere together. And we're gonna have a great time. And then this they get there, on. and you're like, "It's <laughs> a football party. I just thought it was a party." And I think that's what you gotta do. But it's then, all dudes, you know. <laughs> you get a little drinks, and hey, we're you know, it's a new age. It's not all dudes anymore. It's not. We could get you know a little bit, but I think that's what you gotta do. You know, maybe you go to a bar downtown or something like that that's got the draft on. So yeah, there's a little bit of everything there. But you, I think that's the game plan. You have to have a drinking game involved. You gotta get like, it. hey, this thing's on. Right. It just happens we to be watch. on. It's a big night for right. me, but we're still gonna have fun and have other friends here. Right. Blah, Here's blah, like blah. our drinking bingo sheet or I whatever it is. That's what and I would it, say. And you know what? It, it actually yeah. might go really well. Right. Honestly. Yeah. Lee, I would like you to report back. Yeah. Please. To Sims on I want to hear what you I do. actually want to know how you pulled this off or if it's just a complete catastrophe. I, I yeah, right. You know, I, I you know, try any angle you can, but yeah, I, we would like the update here, Lee. So yes. please let us know how you handle this and how this all works out. All right. It's very important to us. All dude, right. Always everybody. a blast. Always. You the man. Appreciate you, dude. You doing the show here in a minute? Happy hour today? You no. no, no, no. So good. Okay. One of us three comes into work. <laughs> yeah. You're no. hilarious. Yeah. No shot. No they are here. shot. No, no shot. All right, everybody. You know where to find us. You know where to find all things NBC Sports. Connor just laid it out there for you. NBCSports.com slash NFL Draft. Check us out Wednesday. You know where to find us. We'll be back here. Jay Croucher, AMAs. Connor, thanks as always yeah, for you. driving the ship. You the yes, man. You're so much cooler the books. than Ahmed Fareed. <laughs> just want to state that one more time on the way out. All right, everybody. Be good. Peace out. Clap it up. Yo, yo, homies, what's up? I know it's the off-season, but it's never the off-season on Chris Sims Unbutton. Me and Ahmed Fareed are going to be here for it all. You know we got free agency. We're going to break it all down. The draft, the rankings of positions. Of course, we're going to unpack it all. Hit subscribe, get to my free agency reactions, 2024 draft rankings, and more. Thanks again for watching. Peace out, homies. See you soon.